However, today we have released KCSV3 firmware for King Kong A32 Pro Relay Controller. And in this video, I will show you some new advantage of KCSV3 and how it works. And the first, we have released the A32 Pro firmware. And in future, we will release a B series board and F series board a KCSV3 firmware because it's already under testing. And now let's look at how it works with the A32 Pro. Okay, you can see uh, this is my computer. Uh, today we have introduced you this A32 Pro work with the KCSV3. And we are also testing with this uh, Kinkone B16M and F16 uh, so that we will release the new firmware for these two controllers soon. And at the first, let's look at uh, this form. You can download the KCSV3 uh, 3.0.1 uh, from our form, and you can see there are some new advantages. Uh, this is the bin file you can download. So we have mainly four four point advantage. Uh, the first one is a fixed bug uh, with the Ethernet static IP mode. There are some problems we have fixed in V3. And also you can see this this is uh, new functions because we have spent many months uh, for testing and developing these new functions. The first you can see the second just we will support King Kong new card server so that A32 Pro can connect to King Kong card server. And you can see uh, this King Kong card server you just enable and disable so it's very easy. And uh, so that you can use your mobile phone um, uh, either iPhone or Android phone and with your computer uh, either PC Windows PC or Apple Macintosh so that all can remote control by internet so you can see this is our company web card server web page so you can use your web browser with your mobile phone or with your computer and all this device can integrate to can connect your card server and almost not need any setting just directed to use so you can see this is the, the first one, a new functions. And the second, you can see this auto discover for home assistant. Uh, we have added this function. Uh, you can see just for zero code config, you don't need to set any code, uh, just directly to use because we have enabled this auto discover for home assistant. Later, I will show you how it works. And the next, we have support the Apple HomeKit directly. So the A32 Pro, uh, the hardware, uh, for example, the relay output and the digital input and the analog output and the analog input and the sensor, all can integrate to Home Apple HomeKit application. So you can see, at here you can see uh, this input, output, and then ADC and the DAC and the sensor. You can use home HomeKit, uh, that is very easy. Just, you can just enable the channel and import the name so that you can uh, use your device on Apple HomeKit right now. Later, I will show you step by step how to set up. Okay, let's back to my computer and see this KCS firmware A32 Pro. And this is the index web page. You can see I have downloaded the V3 A32 Pro. And you can see uh, this import as before, you can set uh, or reverse the level. And this is the output, you can see uh, this is as thing as before, just uh, some different mode uh, set for the output. And the sensor, I have connected two sensors uh, for my A32 Pro. Uh, one is DS18B20 temperature sensor, and one is DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. So that you can see the monitor. Web page, you can see this sensor, sensor, and humidity. So you can see I have connected with my uh, box. And you can see this A32 Pro. I have downloaded the KCSB3 firmware and connect with my Ethernet. And this is running the Home Assistant on King Kong Server 16, Raspberry Pi 4, Linux computer. So this I have connected with one temperature sensor. And this one is temperature and the humidity sensor, DHT11. And this I have connected the analog input uh, with uh, analog input. Uh, it outputs the 
it's, it's output the voltage, uh, the voltage or the current. Uh, this I have tested, uh, used the voltage to test it. So I can close it firstly. Okay, now let's look at my computer. And uh, this is the FDDD. Uh, also, as before, you can set if then and show so that you can link the different sensor for different actions. So this will be easy. And the next, the network, you can use the uh, Ethernet and Wi-Fi or 4G module. And the next, the protocol, you can see. And this protocol, you can see, we have at this HomeKit component. And let's look at the first, the January. And the January, you can see, this helps you the King County Cloud. So if you can enable this King County Cloud, because uh, if you have buy the product from King County official store or official shop, we will uh, give you free two years uh, for use our cloud server. Uh, this uh, only for our King County official store user. And you can see, uh, I can click save and click OK, and the country will be reboot. So now I will show you how to add this uh, server, server number and add this ID to King County Cloud Server. And you can click Monit, and you will see Refresh. You can see the King County Cloud have connected. So now this controller is to Pro have connected King County Cloud Server. And also you will see this Tuya also is connected. So now you can use Tuya mobile phone application and the King County web page at the same time. Uh, this two ways all use by internet so that you can remote control your relay and remote monitor your sensor state in anywhere just on the world you have internet okay now you can see this is our King County web page the new card server and this URL you can visit by your computer and by your mobile phone because it's HTML5 uh, format and you can see the first I can click the index and this have a server number, this server number, I just copy and go to my account. Uh, the first you just need to register from our King County card server. And you can see this is add. And after you add a device, uh, this is login. Just paste your server number, add here, click add. Okay. Now you can see the a Pro have online. This online, you can click and you can see all this a uh, resource you can use it here, such as you can click. You can see that this is on, so this relay is on. And I can click off. So this will be off and feedback to our cloud server. And you can see this is analog output, a zero to time voltage analog output so that you can control your motor speed or control your lamp brightness and this is analog input and this is a sensor, the temperature, you can see the temperature the second sensor and this is input state, 40 channel input state on the card server and you can also click this icon to config for example, the device name, you can change it uh, for example, A32 Pro controller and the output one, if you don't want, you want to hit it because it has totally 32 channel relay if you don't want to use sound release, you can just click, click, click so that will be don't displayed on the web page okay, and also you can see you can uh, delete uh, for the AC and ADC and the sensor and for input. So this will be uh, delete or uh, enable or disable and also you can rename. You can input your name as your language, not must English, just your local language. For example, the output one is switch and also I can import my Chinese, Chinese uh, name. For example, record Taiwan. And also, if you have uh, some different Russia or uh, other countries, you can just import the name. So you can see, I can click this one, apply, and click save. 
And this time we can enter again. Okay, you can see the name is changed. And this is switch, and this is type one, and this is output uh, three, output four. So you can rename every device. It's very easy because it can rename by computer. This input will be very easy. If only rename by the mobile phone. So this is very small, the mobile phone. Okay, so this is the first uh, we can use King County Cloud Server directly. So you can see at this protocol, and I just enable. I don't need to do anything else. Okay, the so next we look at, we can use the Home Assistant for auto discovery function. And you can see this is my Home Assistant dashboard. And you can see the setting and the device. And the device, uh, this have already have King Kone, this uh, energy meet, energy meet board. Now I will show you how it works uh, integrate Home Assistant with Zero code. So it's also very easy. You can see just at here, we enable it, enable it. And the device name, that means shared in Home Assistant, just this name. And you can rename by yourself. Uh, for example, I can A32 Pro. My A32 Pro, I just the name for this. And this broke address, that means the most cute installed on the Home Assistant because you can see uh, I have installed the add-on uh, Moscute MQTT block in Home Assistant. So I just uh, fill the IP address of Raspberry Pi 4. You can see this in my load, the Home Assistant at this IP address. So I just copy this IP address and at here, I can just choose this one. This is my Raspberry Pi IP address and the broke port and the username and the password just check your most cute configuration you can see mqtt username is mqtt the password is one two three i just for testing so my password is very easy so you just replace by yourself and this is the port mqtt default port is the one eight eight three so uh, just i set fill this mqtt and one two three so this is the information of your most cute of your home assistant information so i just click save and click ok ok the ac2 pro will reboot let's back to our home assistant and let's back to my device and device and wait for a moment <laughs> So I can refresh. Okay, you can see this A32 Pro have auto discovered my A32 Pro. So this is my A32 Pro. So you can see this A32 Pro controller have added to Home Assistant right now without any code. Okay, and we can click, and you can see I can turn on, turn off relay. And this, I can control this DAC output for the dimmer. And you can see, and the next, this is sensor, the digital input sensor, and the ADC, the analog input sensor. So these all sensors and the switches, you can see the temperature sensor, and the, te the second temperature sensor, and the humidity, all have connected to home assistant and it, you just click add to dashboard so that all hardware results can use in home assistant right now so this is very easy and just you have installed the mqtd book on your home assistant okay this is the second advantage uh, use the home assistant by mqtd auto discover and let's look at the next uh, we can click this one apple home kit uh, but also you can see there are not any other uh, protocol you can use MQTT and connect to your own color server and connect to uh, your own color server by TCP or HTTP and UDP and IS485 mode bus. So this all protocol have support in A32 Pro and in KCS v3. And the next we look at the is biggest, biggest advantage, the Apple HomeKit. So the first 
uh, we just need to enable it. Uh, so we just need to configure in HomeKit this input and output firstly. For example, you can you because it have forty channel digital input, but I want uh, for demo such as I want to use two two channel. So this I can show the name a 32 Pro input one. And actually, you can rename by some window sensor or door sensor or some uh, other sensors. I just for te uh, testing and for the demo. So I input the A32 Pro input one and input two. And this two channel is enabled. So I can click save and reboot. And this is set for the digital input. And after the boot, and we will click the output. And the output also you can see this have 32, that is 32 channel relay output. If I also want to use two channel, if you want you five channel, you just click five channel. And I just use two channel for demo video. Uh, you can see output one and output two. Okay, uh, this is name and click save and reboot. So you just uh, Enable, disable, rename, and save. <laughs> so this step will be very easy. And the next, if you want to use this DAC, because A32 Pro have two channel DAC output, the lot of time voltage for brightness. So you can, I can enable this two DAC, DAC one and DAC two, and click save, and click reboot. And the next, we can look at this ADC. That is analog input for some analog sensor. So I can also use one channel or two channel. I just use one channel. I want to save the time. So you can click ADC one, save and reboot. And the next, the next, is the last one, the sensor. Because I have created two sensors, I just enable these two sensors. And this one, the first one, I can call T1. And the second one, I can call T, T2. Actually, you can use sensor 1 or sensor 2. Oh, OK, save and reboot. OK, and the final step, just uh, go into this concrete generate and just enable. If you want to debug, output debug the uh, information from the USB cable, you just enable this one. And actually, I just click this enable and click save and click reboot. And we will use this HomeKit code to pair with your iPhone or iPad or your Apple Watch. Okay, let's look at how to add this in my iPhone. Okay, let's look at, this is HomeKit, and click HomeKit, and click this one, add a device, scan device, and click this one, more option. And you will find this auto discovered A32 Pro. I just click the icon and add anyway. And this code, you can see on my compute, uh, I have showed one, 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 Two, two, three, three, three. So just click continue. Okay, you can see that have uh, let you set the bridge location, and we can set to the bedroom and continue. And the break bridge name, the default A32 Pro. Okay, I can I not need to change it. And the bridge have added to my home and continue. And the first that I have found is the digital import one. So we can click continue and uh, also bedroom and the name input one because this have set my compute. And also you can remove it here. Just I import on the computer will be faster and uh, easy. And continue and choose uh, such a door sensor. You can choose this icon and continue. And the second you can see discovered that also choose the rule name and the rename and the default I have input. This is window sensor and continue and the next. Okay, you can find uh, it found the T2 humility 
and continue and badge loop continue and continue and continue and this is dimmer this dimmer also continue badge loop and the name is default is DAC1 and this is second channel DAC and continue okay the next is analog input the analog input in home kit that is a lighter sensor uh, because I can't change other, just use the lighter sensor and the lighter sensor continue and this output just a switch so continue and continue and the switch or you can set the, for the fan continue continue and the fan okay continue and this is a T1 it's the temperature sensor okay continue and continue and continue 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 down okay now you can see all icon have added to the home kit uh, this one you can see a 32 pro and you can see uh, this LED on and off and this is the second on and off and let's test the DAC uh, this is a dimmer you can see we can use a multimeter to test it, how it works and I can test it because it out of the yellow turn but so you can see this is DAC1 I just test it here this is channel 1 DAC output and I can use this okay you can see 53% uh, 5.29 almost is 53 it's good and you can see uh, this is 86 almost is 86 and 100% that is almost 10 volt so this is very linear and uh, this is 25 this is 25 2.4 so the value is very good uh, this is 65 almost is 65 okay this is output the are to 10 volt for dimmer used by the home kit okay and also you can see I can close it also you can see the bedroom and you will see the temperature the temperature sensor you can see these two temperature sensor uh, just this one and this one uh, show it here and you can see the humidity uh, this is humidity and also you can see the door sensor window sensor and the light uh, the light is analog input uh, if I just uh, let it become large, the value become large, and also you will see the value is changed. So the value is changed. This this you need to set the range in KCS web page. This is we have integrated to Apple HomeKit, and also you can use on uh, iPad, and we can also. We can use the Tuya mobile phone application. You can see it here. Uh, this Tuya mobile phone application, you can see the A32 Pro. The switch and the dimmer and the input state. So you can see, turn on, turn on, turn on, turn on. So this is controlled by the Tuya. And let's look at my computer. Let's test it. And you can see this is a to Pro web page. And this is Home Assistant. This is Home Assistant. And this is a to Pro web page. We can look at uh, the, this one. You can see I can click. King Kong web page. 
you can see the Home Assistant is updated the state. And also, you can see in my Tuya, Tuya mobile phone, that is update. So, you can use Tuya and use King County Cloud Server web page or use Home Assistant. The all state will work at the same time and update at the same time. So, you can see, I can put my mobile phone at here. And because HomeKit mainly used in local network, so we can so we can test the Tuya mobile phone and Home Assistant and uh, uh, web page. Okay, you can see I can turn off. This is off, and Tuya is off, and turn on. This Kinkuni web page is on, and Tuya is on. So. I can also turn off my Tuya and the Home Assistant is off and the King Kony web page is off. Okay, so the state uh, is working at the same time. And also, uh, this King Kony web page now is work on the computer. I will show you it works on the mobile phone. Also, it's very easy. You don't need to install any application on mobile phone. And you can see this is my mobile phone Tuya application. I just can click web browser. And just import this URL, and you can see also the Acident Pro controller should at here. This can list all controller at here. I just click, and that can uh, you can see the interface at here, the output switch and the DAC and the different analog input and the sensor. So you can see the switch also is renamed as as thing as the PC. You can see I can click. The switch when is on and click the switch is on and also home assistant and Tuya is update off and off and you can see the state will be update after the relay is actually turned on and turned off so you can see this is some new advantage new functions in kcs v3 and this is for a32 pro uh, because our new controller B16M and F16 and some new uh, modules already on the developing that have many more different new hardware resources. So the KCS V3 will have many new functions for new controller. And I will make the video talk when the firmware is released. Okay, thanks for watching.